Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. The big story at a macro level is the continued supply chain crunch for chip makers. And the largest U.S. maker of memory chips, which is Micron Technology, reported estimate beating earnings earlier this week. They uh, did guide on the possibility of lower demand from a possible step down in PC customers. So let's get a picture of the complicated supply demand dynamics in the chip space with the company itself with Manish Bhatia. He's Micron Technology's executive vice president of global operations. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show this morning. You know, it's interesting because even the likes of Fed Chairman Jay Powell are paying attention to this. He's saying that chips are a big reason why inflation could be high, but he expects that to move down over the course of 2022. So I just, you know, just to start off there, is the outlook for the chip issues with supply and demand also expected from your vantage point to alleviate uh, over that time frame? Yeah. Thanks, Brian. And thanks uh, to all of you for having me back on. Um, yes, you're right, Brian. The, the um, kind of unprecedented demand strength across you know, multiple end markets really synchronized right now um, over the last, uh, as we've kind of started to recover out of the pandemic, has uh, created shortages um, uh, across different components and parts of the semiconductor supply chain. Um, and, you know, we are seeing that that is impacting some of the end market uh, demand and pushing out some of that demand, particularly in the PC market. Um, but what's important to note is that the demand itself, the end market demand continues to be very strong. And so the, the demand we think will be uh, continuing to stay strong throughout calendar year 22, while everyone wants to be able to get their new devices for uh, working from home, learning from home. Um, everyone wants to take advantage of 5G uh, app availability on new phones. And of course, you know, continued strong growth in the cloud and automotive as uh, we move towards more uh, electronic ve electric vehicles, which require more semiconductor components. So, um, we think the, the end market demand is going to remain strong um, you know, through into calendar year 22. And on the supply side, there these shortages, um, you know, really the the time to be able to react to them is uh, uh, extended because of the length of time it takes for new capacity to be put in place. Um, we do expect that gradually through calendar year 22, these shortages will improve across multiple components. In terms of memory, we have depleted our inventory over the course of uh, uh, the last several quarters. Uh, as you noted, we had a very strong fiscal Q4 that just ended in August and uh, set several records for different end market uh, demand growth. So we had a very, uh, very good year. But our inventories are lean right now, and it will take some time for us to gradually have new supply that comes online to catch up. And we expect the second half of our fiscal year um, to see our shipment growth continue to, to, or to resume um, in a more meaningful way. Manish, um, I'm sure we're going to talk more about supply, but I do want to dig into the demand side of the equation a little bit more. Because when you guys came out with your numbers, that was sort of the part that stuck out to me. It seemed as though, looking on the surface with the decrease to the or the sales forecast that came in below uh, the streets estimates that there was a little bit of waning of, of PC demand in particular. So it sounds like from what you're saying, that's not indeed the case. Can you talk us through that a little bit more? Sure. Because sort of intuitively, it would seem that it, maybe we would see a little bit of a decline because, you know, kids are going back to school. Some people are going back to the office. But what's happening on the ground? Yeah, so I think the, the big issue for the PC side is that, uh, you know, they over the last, if you, if you go back to pre-pandemic levels, they were in a flat to declining uh, kind of year-over-year -year trend. And then over since the pandemic, in both calendar year uh, 20 and 21, they've seen uh, growth resume in the PC space because of work from home and learn from home and shop from home trends just continuing to grow. And that, um, and then as those growth trends have, have established themselves, the PC industry has not been able to get supply of other components, um, not memory specifically, but other components. They haven't been able to get the match sets they need to be able to fulfill their end market demand. So that's why we think the PC market, the, the end demand is there. It's just going to be uh, you know, kind of elongating the cycle of both the PC growth as well as uh, memory's ability, you know, our ability to be able to ship to, the, to that end demand. Across all the other end markets, um, you know, we see uh, kind of a similar, very strong demand picture cloud driven by AI and, and machine learning trends um, and uh, and mobile driven by 5G uh, and the rollout of 5G globally. These are two very strong markets that are continuing to do well for us. 
and automotive, which uh, you know we probably all pick up the newspapers and read about the the, the chip shortage impacting automotive. You know, we see that gradually starting to recover through calendar year 22 as well. And uh, what's important to note about automotive is that the, 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 as we move towards electric vehicles, the content of DRAM and NAND and all other semiconductors continues to grow as electric vehicles just um, require more semiconductor content, both to operate as well as to provide the, the infotainment experience that we all expect from, ele from an electric vehicle. So, you know, we do believe that this synchronized demand will continue to be uh, strong across all end markets, um, across uh, well into calendar year 22. And these silicon prices, uh, they're up. They've surged 300% plus uh, in two months' time. What type of impact will that have on your profit margins? Yeah. So we actually, thank you, Brian, we actually um, guided to um, you know, strong uh, gross margins, healthy gross margins here, quarter over quarter. Actually, our guidance for gross margins for um, our fiscal Q1 was the same guidance we had given for fiscal uh, Q4. So um, we see that uh, the environment for um, our uh, uh, for our, our pricing as well as our cost to be to be healthy, and we continue to see good margin growth in terms of silicon. That is one of the input costs that we are um, you know uh, we do have. We have other input costs re related to you know COVID mitigations that we've had to put in place and and other aspects where we do see costs going up. But at the same time, um, for our business, the most important factor in cost decline is our technology transitions and. Uh, uh, Micron is now leading uh, in both the DRAM technology with our One Alpha uh, technology, as well as in our in uh, NAND technology with our 176 layer 3D NAND technology. Both of these are well ahead of the rest of the industry, and so we're going to get very good cost declines from those two, which will help us to um, you know to uh, to be able to maintain healthy gross margins in next quarter. Uh, Manish, is there anything um, as the infrastructure kind of discussions in D.C. continue that uh, the nation's capital could do with regards to uh, infrastructure that maybe not even chip specific, but manufacturing specific uh, that would really help the industry in the long term as you look out past this COVID recovery, um, you know, five, 10 years down the line? So I think you know, definitely whether you think about infrastructure uh, and you know, the stimulus that would that would create, which would um, you know, allow us to digitize much more of our daily lives here in the United States, um, continuing to focus on uh, upskilling and training uh, the workforce of tomorrow uh, so that um, things like big data become a part of a school curriculum and and uh, become things that uh, are techniques that everyone can use because that's obviously, and you know, semiconductor manufacturing is at the leading edge of advanced semiconductor industry and it's real, and, and me memory is at the leading edge of the semiconductor industry in terms of manufacturing uh, challenges. and. Certainly, we need um, the, the, the best and brightest talent to be focused on helping us uh, deliver new technologies and ramping them efficiently at scale. So those are a couple of things that they can do. But we are also encouraged by the, the focus on semiconductor-specific uh, programs like the CHIPS Act, like the FABS Act, which we think can help reverse the trend of uh, semiconductor manufacturing uh, leaving the United States and potentially bring more semi advanced semiconductor manufacturing back to the United States. We're, we're encouraged by that, and we, um, you know, we continue to um, work with our uh, with um, our, our uh, representatives in Washington to hopefully see that legislation through. All right, Manish Bhatia, again, Micron Technologies Executive Vice President of Global Operations. Thanks for joining us on Yahoo Finance this morning.